Good morning. Proverbs 3 is one of my favorite uh, chapters in the Bible. It spoke to me as a young man uh, shortly after I became an adult. Uh, in, in Proverbs 3, Solomon is speaking to his son. And it's the last word before his son goes out into the world to be a young man. And I think we can all learn uh, from the many areas that he speaks about. And as I read these verses, I'm also reminded of the New Testament and the many verses that link to this in the New Testament. Uh, in John 15, Jesus said, I will no longer call you my servants, I will call you my friend. And there's a point in a young man's life when his father remains his father, but his father becomes his friend. They become equal. And I think that is very important within the relationship of the father and the son, as well as a relationship within the church and the church members as our young men and women grow up. We uh, accept them as a friend and a, a, a viable member of our church. Let me read. My son, do not forget my teachings, but let your heart keep my commandments for the length of days and years of your life and peace they will add to you. He's reminding him of his, uh, of his teachings, but he, the teachings are what are in your head. He said, let your heart keep my commandments. So what I've taught you, I want you now, my son, to live out in the world. Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck and write them on the tablet of your heart so you will find favor and goodness in sight of God and man. Let steadfast love and, and faithfulness, uh, let it not forsake you. Steadfast, don't be flighty, don't, don't vary. It speaks of strength. James speaks about the, the double mind in saying, you know, be steady. And the other word that's right next to it is steadfast love. We all should live our life in such that Christ's love flows through us and that we should be faithful in all that we do. Uh, I'm reminded of the old song, let those that come behind me find me faithful. And this is what Solomon is reminding his son. And if you are steadfast, if you show the love of God in your life, if you show faithfulness to those that you work with, it says you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. You will honor the Lord and men will see that. Uh, Proverbs, another area it speaks of, it says, when your ways uh, please the Lord, even your enemies are at peace with you. And so these are some things that uh, really stood out to me early on in life. At 19, I bought a set of luggage and a one-way bus ticket to New Orleans. And at 19, I went into the workforce away from home, uh, out into a very wild and dangerous environment, working offshore in the oil fields of Louisiana. The last thing that my uh, father did as we, before we left the house is he handed me a brand new Cambridge Bible, still in the box. That Cambridge Bible is special to me for the fact that 
it was identical to the Cambridge Bible that I saw my dad pack in his lunch kit every day. I saw the words that were underlined in the many things. And so without anything else, he said, son, take this Bible with you as you go. Nothing else, no more reminding. And so I got on the bus with the determination that I was going to be just like my father. And so I started reading scriptures and I started in the Psalms and then ended up in the Proverbs and ended up in chapter three. And there's been a lot of discussion, you know, Lord, what about this? What about that? And these have been things that have been just tremendous to my life. Uh, let me pick up in verse five, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. You know, if you look at this, this is the plan of salvation. You know, you know, 2 Corinthians 5, it says we walk, 5, 7, I believe it is, we walk by faith and not by sight. Here he's saying, trust in the Lord. In the New Testament, it speaks of our faith. Trust and faith work together. They are pretty much the same word. Lean not on your own understanding. You do not have to understand all of God's plan for God to work in your life. That's a big thing for a young man out in the world by himself. Lord, how do I know it's you? How do I do it? Lord, Lord, you know, that was where I was as a young man studying God's word. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Acknowledge that God is in every aspect of your life. Acknowledge that God is directing you and God will make your path straight. God will bless you. If there is a path, there is a direction, there is a purpose. That is something that you grow into. This is a journey. As a child, I was saved at eight, but now at 19 years old, I am really beginning the journey of a relationship with the Lord. I am finding out not only is he my salvation, but he wants to have fellowship with me. And I can talk to the Lord just like I can talk to my father, which was an excellent example to me as a child. He will make your path straight. Here in verse seven is a warning. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. What does that mean? You know, as I looked at that, I thought, I thought about it and back and forth, I kept going, what exactly are you saying, Lord? And for me, I've never heard anybody say this exactly how the verse goes. But for me, it says, don't be prideful. The verses above said that the that I'm to believe in the Lord with all my heart, lean not on my own understanding, and he has a path for me to go down. And if I'm going down that path and following God's word, God will bless me. And God has blessed me and done many things in my life. This is a warning. Don't be prideful. Don't claim your success as being your success, rather than acknowledge that the blessings and success you have in your life come from God. And that relationship will grow as you do that. 
Verse 9, honor the Lord with your wealth and with your first fruits of all your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. I cannot emphasize the importance of tithing enough. I can tell you at 65 that tithing is one of our greatest ways to acknowledge God. It's not the money, it is the attitude that God, you have blessed me with all of this abundance and I want to give back what, uh, what needs to be given back, the, the tithe. Uh, and I also believe that tithing is also of my time and my talents in serving the Lord. Uh, it is part of my witness to the world around me that God is good, God is faithful, and I want to acknowledge him, acknowledge his faithfulness with my times. In, uh, in verse 11 it says, my son do not despise the Lord's discipline or grow weary of his reproof for the Lord reproves him who he loves, as a father, the son, in whom he delights. We're all going to sin. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And there are times in our life when the Lord has to discipline us. But God's discipline, as we grow as Christian, we learn is out of love. It is because he wants the best for us. And so at times he has to make a course adjustment in our life to keep us on the path. Don't grow weary with that. Understand that it is because of love. Be quick to repent and confess and allow God to direct your life back onto the path that he has for you. One of the things that I worried about early in life was will I mess up my life enough will I fail will I get off the path enough that I will dishonor God or my family as I grow I realize that God will bring us back to the correct path if you resist it will be more painful so be quick and be close to the Lord so that you hear his prompting to move to the left or to right to get back on the path. Verse 13, blessed is the one who finds wisdom and the one who gets understanding for the gain from her is better than silver and profit better than gold. She is more precious than jewels and nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand, and in her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are, ways are pleasant, and her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who lay hold of her. Those who hold her fast are blessed. God gives us knowledge and it's in our head. But as we take that knowledge and we apply God's truth to that, it becomes wisdom. It becomes something that is more valuable than gold or silver. With that wisdom, you make good decisions. With that wisdom, you hear that still small voice in the back of your head saying, do not go this way or go this way. And by faith, not leaning on our own understanding, but by faith, we acknowledge God and we move in the direction that the way God is leading us. And we are blessed and we find peace. There are so many things that we will find out when we get back to when we get to heaven one day 
that have what we avoided by listening to God's prompting. And then Solomon explains to his son about wisdom. In verse 19, the Lord by wisdom founded the earth and by understanding he established the heavens. By his knowledge, the deeps broke open and the clouds dropped down the dew. My son, do not lose sight of these. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. There's another thing that is really important. As we grow wiser, as we grow in knowledge of the Lord, we learn to speak at times when it needs to be spoken, but we also learn to be quiet at times and not speak when we find that speaking will not benefit one of the Proverbs that comes to mind as I think about this, there's so many scriptures, is for the lack of wood, the fire goes out. Sometimes we get into conditions to where whatever you say is not going to change a person's mind. And so we learn discretion. We learn discernment that we say, Lord, There'll be another day if you want me to, dis to speak. But right now you're telling me, uh, you're giving me discernment to, to remain quiet. In verse 22, and they will be life for your soul and adornment for your neck. Then you will walk on your way secure securely and your foot will not stumble. If you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. If you listen to the Lord, you will be blessed. If you learn from God's word, the discernment, the wisdom, the knowledge, you will be blessed. How many people lay awake at night because they cannot sleep because of the fear of tomorrow? These are promises that says that if you remain on the path, God will be with you. God will give you that rest. God will give you that peace. Do not be afraid of the sudden terror or of the ruin of the wicked when it comes. One of the things we can learn in wisdom is to observe the wicked. We don't have to be part of the wicked, but we're going to encounter them. And we mark them in our mind and say, Lord, your words are true. Your words are just. And you said that you will deal with the wicked. Many times as you, uh, as you observe, you will see God's judgment on the wicked. We can learn from God's judgment on others and we should learn. More advice. Do not withhold good from those whom it is due and when it is in your power to do it. Do not say to your neighbor, go and come again. Tomorrow I'll give it when you have, have it with you. We are always to continue to be looking for ways to serve God. We're always looking and listening to the God's prompting of our heart to do good, to serve. And when it is there, be quick to respond. Be quick to to do what the Lord has placed upon your heart. Sometimes it may be a kind word. Sometimes it may be a helping hand. Sometimes it may be a visit to those that are sick and ill. Sometimes it's financial. Every time you serve the Lord, God will bless you. Every time you will receive more than what you gave out.
Do not plan evil against your neighbor who dwells trustingly beside you. Do not contend with a man for no reason when he has done you no harm. Do not envy a man of violence. Do not choose any of his ways. For the devious person is an abomination to God. But the upright are in his confidence. Pretty self-explanatory. You know what is right. Do it. Do not be part of these people that are doing wrong. And you have confidence in the Lord when you're doing those things. The Lord's curse is on, is on the house of the wicked, but he blesses the dwelling of the righteous. Toward the scorners, he is scornful, but to the humble, he gives favor. The wise will inherit honor, but fools get disgrace. As you study these verses, as you apply them to your life, as I have done since I was 19 years old, you have a growing peace. I know one day that I will stand before the Lord and that will be a great day. But I can say at 65, the longer I serve him, the sweeter it grows. Thank you.